wondered how the richest man in India, Mukesh Ambani, managed to avoid a big family feud with his brother Anil and smoothly pass on the business torch? Get ready for some family drama, business brilliance, and the secrets to keeping it all together. So, are you curious to find out how Mukesh dodged the battle that his brother Anil faced? Let's dive in. Anil Ambani and Mukesh Ambani's dad, Dhirubhai Ambani, started a super successful company called Reliance. Dhirubhai worked hard and made a lot of money, and he wanted his sons to learn the value of hard work too. Dhirubhai Ambani started with a small spice trading business and later got into textiles, offering really good stuff at low prices. The business grew a lot, and soon the Ambani family moved into a fancy six-story apartment. Anil and his big brother Mukesh were supposed to take over the family business. Mukesh was more serious about it, while Anil liked to enjoy life, hanging out with famous people, and having a good time. In the 1980s, Reliance expanded into different industries, making a ton of money, especially in petrochemicals. They bought a huge property in Mumbai, and everything seemed great for the Ambani family. Both brothers joined the family business in their 20s, with Mukesh taking care of facilities and Anil dealing with investors in the press. Mukesh was quiet and focused, while Anil liked the limelight and partying with celebrities. But then things went downhill for Anil. He got into some troubles, and his love for the glamorous life caused problems. Anil Ambani went from having $42 billion to having nothing. It's a sad story of how someone can go from being super rich to having empty pockets. In 2002, Anil's dad, Dhirubhai Ambani, who was a super rich and successful, suddenly passed away. This caused a big problem because Indian law says that when a rich guy dies without leaving a will, his money has to be shared among his wife and kids. So, Mukesh, the older brother, became the big boss of the family business, and Anil became the vice boss. But here's the catch. The brothers didn't get along. Mukesh thought he was the only boss, while Anil thought they were equal. Things got so bad that even the finance minister of India tried to make them get along, but it needed more than just a government guy to fix this mess. That's when their mom, Kokila Bain Ambani, stepped in. Despite mom's efforts, the fight over who gets to be the ultimate boss continued. So, Kokila Bain came up with a solution. Split the family business in two. Mukesh got some companies and Anil got some others. They agreed not to compete with each other for 10 years. But this solution created even more problems in the long run. The brothers had to follow some rules, like not entering each other's businesses, and it caused a lot of trouble. In 2005, after three years of arguing and negotiating, the split was approved by the Supreme Court of India. Mukesh's companies were called Reliance Industries Limited, and Anil's side became Reliance ADA. By 2006, both were leading major companies in India, even though they lived in the same big family home. Despite the physical closeness, there was a lot of distance between them, and they were both determined to be the most successful in the Ambani family. But things didn't go that well for Anil. In the early years of doing his own thing, he did really well. First, he jumped into the telecom world and shook things up with a budget-friendly mobile network called Reliance Communications. Anil Ambani invested about $2 billion in getting advanced 3G wireless technology. To keep up with the changes in the telecom industry, he kept moving forward. 3G was a big deal at that time, and soon Reliance Communications became the top mobile provider in India. Anil Ambani didn't stop there. He bought AdLab Films and turned them into Reliance MediaWorks by 2008, becoming the owner of the biggest multiplex operator in India with over 700 screens. Anil also made connections with Hollywood, signing a $1.2 billion deal with filmmaker Steven Spielberg to support his production company DreamWorks in 2008. This collaboration brought Anil financial success with acclaimed movies like War Horse, Lincoln, and Bridge of Spies. In 2012, Reliance Media Works funded movies that got 11 Oscar nominations, winning one for Octavia Spencer's performance in The Help. Anil Ambani hosted private screenings of Hollywood hits at his home, attended by Mumbai's elite, excluding his brother Mukesh. In 2008, Anil Ambani reached a peak in his golden years. He made history in the Indian stock market by putting Reliance Power shares up for sale in an initial public offering, or IPO. The demand for shares was 10.6 times the available amount, were all sold for a total of $3 billion in just 60 seconds. Anil Ambani became the sixth richest person globally with an incredible $42 billion. However, despite all his success, Anil Ambani still felt overshadowed by his older brother Mukesh, who was just ahead of him on the Forbes billionaire list. Anil's jealousy and ambition were about to lead him into a downfall he didn't see coming. 
Anil Ambani faced big problems when he realized his mobile company, Reliance Communications, needed more sales. To keep up with technology and make his company bigger, he took out lots of huge loans. He invested $2 billion in getting 3G capabilities, but this expansion caused about half of Reliance Communications' debt. An exciting plan to merge with South African mobile company MTN, creating a giant telecom firm worth over $70 billion, failed because of a family agreement. In 2005, the Ambrani brothers signed a deal giving Mukesh priority in buying shares if Reliance Communications was sold or merged. This legal problem made MTN back out, crushing Anil Ambani's hopes. In 2011, some top people from Reliance Communications got arrested for trying to get mobile licenses dishonestly to boost the company's share price. With a lot of debt and scandals, Anil Ambani had to borrow more money in 2012. He got a huge loan of $1.2 billion from three Chinese banks to pay back the $7.19 billion debt that piled up around Reliance Communications by 2011. But things were about to get even worse. In 2010, Anil Ambani borrowed a huge amount of money, $922 million from Exim Bank to build a very big power plant. It was supposed to be a good way to make money. An agreement between Anil and his brother Mukesh said that Mukesh would sell gas to Anil's companies at a lower price, but when they started building the power plant, the government didn't approve his deal. The court said gas prices should be fair for everyone and couldn't be changed. This decision made Mukesh's gas profits double, and Anil's companies lost a lot of value in the stock market. The brothers cancelled the agreement that said they couldn't compete with each other. In 2012, Mukesh built a super expensive and huge house in Mumbai called Antilia. It cost $1.2 billion and had 27 stories, a big garage for 168 cars, and even a private movie theater. Anil felt like Mukesh was showing off his wealth. In 2016, Mukesh entered the communications industry and started his own mobile network called Geo. Geo became very popular with over 150 million customers, and it changed the telecom industry in India. Anil's telecom company, Reliance Communications, couldn't keep up and lost a lot of value. It's not clear why Mukesh did this, but Geo's success added more problems for Anil. After Geo's success, Anil got into a lawsuit with a former partner, Swedish network company Ericsson. In 2016, a big problem hit Mukesh Ambani's brother, Anil Ambani. He owed a massive $80 million and the Indian Supreme Court told him to pay it back with interest or go to jail. Just before the deadline, Mukesh Ambani stepped in with the money to save his brother. It might seem like brotherly love, but for Anil, it was embarrassing. After some troubles in the telecom sector, Anil's company filed for bankruptcy in 2019. He owed a lot of money, especially to three Chinese lenders who took him to court in 2019, claiming he promised to pay them back but didn't. Anil only paid a small part and the banks wanted the rest, $717 million. Things got worse. In 2020, Anil shocked everyone by saying his wealth went from $42 billion in 2008 to zero. Despite this, he still had a fancy house, a private jet, a fleet of cars worth millions, and a yacht. Anil denied owning the yacht, saying a company did, so it wasn't his personal wealth, but he still had many expensive things. When it came to paying his debts, Anil said he sold his jewelry to cover legal fees. He avoided selling his $3 million cars and lucked by saying he didn't technically own them. In 2021, it was revealed that Anil might have hidden millions in overseas accounts. During the case with the Chinese banks, the judge suggested that Anil could have asked his brother for more money. Anil said his brother told him the first bailout was a one-time thing, so despite claiming to be broke, Anil might have more money hidden away. Mukesh Ambani's company, Reliance Industries Limited, made it to the 155th spot on the Fortune 500 list of successful global businesses with a mind-blowing worth of $217 billion. Mukesh, the big brother, is now the richest person in India, with a whopping $92.7 billion to his name. He's even buddies with Mark Zuckerberg, who bought 10% of Mukesh's mobile phone company Geo in 2020. On the flip side, Anil Ambani, the younger brother, has been leading a more private life, working hard to boost his companies and increase his net worth. Reports say he works 6 days a week, starting his day with a 5am wake-up call, a 10-mile run, and a no-sugar diet. He puts in 12-hour days at the office, grinding from 9.30am to 9.30pm. Despite his efforts, Anil's financial story is one of riches to rags due to lawsuits and scandals, quite the opposite of his father's journey from poor to rich. Anil and Mukesh had different approaches to business. Mukesh's slow and strategic growth is seen as more successful in the long run compared to Anil's quicker money-making ventures. Anil, once praised as a business genius, faced setbacks and controversies that led to a decline in his fortunes. 
It's interesting to think about what could have been if the brothers had put aside their differences. Bocatia's business act with Anno's people skills could have taken Reliance Corporation to greater heights. But, alas, their egos and competition got in the way.